hello, and welcome to our Trent virtual live stream session where we are talking about financing your education in everything and everything OSAP. My name is Jonathan Simagaza. I am an enrollment advisor here at Trent University and proud Trent alum, and I'm joined today with an all-star panel. We have Emma Grant Berger, Bergeron, excuse me, a fourth year psychology student here at Trent University. We also have Danielle Aspen, who is the affordability coordinator and working behind the scenes is Amy Curtin, who is also another affordability, affordability administrator. So if you're getting a message here and there from an unknown source, that's Amy talking. The night is going to be broken down fairly easily. We're going to start with a nice little mini lecture from Danielle, and then we'll move into what I call the formal Q&A, where I'll ask Danielle and Emma a variety of questions surrounding OSAP um, to get the ball rolling. And after that, we'll enter our unofficial uh, Q&A. This is the opportunity for you at home to go ahead and ask any and all of your questions. And the best part about that is you don't have to wait until the very end. If you have a question right now, you can type it into our Q&A and we'll get to it later on. Maybe Danielle says something in her mini lecture that sparks something for you. Go ahead and put a question in there. Nothing is too big and too small, and we'll try our best to answer every single question before our time is up with you all, lovely folks. So without further ado, Danielle, the floor is yours, sure. and we look forward to it. Great. Let me get my presentation all set and share a screen. And we're all set. You guys can see me okay? All right. Okay, so like Jonathan mentioned, we are going to talk about funding your education. So the agenda is pretty simple. I've got about 15 minutes, so I'm going to blow your mind with a whole bunch of information, but feel free to pop those questions into the Q&A. Amy and myself will go ahead and address them later on. I'm going to chat with you about what is financial aid, how much does it cost to go to university, and how to afford that through scholarships, OSAPs, bursaries, and then the other resources outside of the school. And everything in this presentation is for a domestic undergraduate. So I can't really chat about international. If you have questions about international um, bursaries and scholarships and that kind of finances, we can definitely give you their contact information in the chat afterwards. So who are we? We're the financial aid office at the Peterborough campus. We're located in Blackburn Hall. So that first building right on the campus there. And we are your uh, money people. We're the people you're gonna come talk to if you have questions about scholarships here at Trent. We're gonna chat with you about our bursary program. We administer the OSAP program. So that's that big government program. We work with band funded students and we also chat with students about work study programs. So I don't chat about on campus jobs any further. So I'll just give you a little tidbit of information about what those are because it is a great source of income. There are jobs reserved on campus for students who are in receipt of OSAP. You um, can work 10 hours a week, you get about $2,000. So it's not huge on the money side, but it's the experience side of these on-campus jobs. So uh, we may have one in our chemistry lab that you could be eligible for. Or like our office, we probably have three, four, maybe five in our registrar's office at any given time of the year. And they're getting that hands-on job experience that they can then pad their resume with later. So um, that's a, a huge bonus, but the bigger bonus is the flexibility of schedule. So in our office, our student may work maybe when, let's say Wednesday and Friday for a couple of hours, as long as they get their 10 hours in in the week, because we'd rather them focus on their academics. So they could come to us and say they have an exam coming up and they need to study. That's cool. Give us your 10 hours over that week and we're happy and you're happy and you get paid and you get that experience. That is the, the big bonus. You want to start looking for those the summer before your fall start because that's when those postings will go up through the career space. So how much does it cost for your first year here at Trent? The numbers you're seeing on the left-hand side, that's based off of a full-time 2021 undergraduate program at the Pedro campus. Now we do emphasize Pedro campus because our Oshawa campus billing does work a little bit differently. The full-time tuition, so that's five credits, so five classes each term, so 10 classes is $6,100. Then you have your fees on top of that, that's $1,400. 
That'll include your campus card. It'll include your health benefits. You'll get that whole package of what all of those fees are. And then you have your books and supplies. So depending on what program you're in, we indicate 1200, but if you're in nursing, that number could be closer to 2000, depending on what your books and supplies look like. The biggest expense that you could incur and most likely will incur is the living. So if you're going to live at home, we estimate 4,200 because you're still gonna have expenses. You're gonna have your cell phone, maybe you're chipping in for groceries, you're helping out with your uh, utilities, maybe insurance on your car. Those are the kind of at home expenses you're expecting. The away from home, we've indicated 12,500. So that could either be living off campus or it could be living on residence. That is the biggest expense and that's where you have to be flexible. So if you're going to live away from home, what you wanna look at is, do I wanna live on my own, maybe in residence or in an apartment by myself and pay rent all on my own? Or do I want to maybe share my space and have one roommate, maybe two or three roommates? to break up that cost because what you don't want is to all of a sudden have all of your money tied up in paying rent and residence and you are struggling to get your textbooks or get food into your cupboards, okay? So really look at that, have those conversations and be flexible. Maybe you don't need the premium room with the air conditioning and your private bathroom and all of those wonderful perks that sound great if it's really gonna make you struggle financially. Another place to look to save some money is your books and supplies. Um, buy used. If you're only going to need that book the one time for that first year, go ahead and chat with other students that are maybe a year ahead of you. You can find them through a Facebook um, or a buy and sell group, and maybe they're offloading their books. So that one book that could be $150, you may be able to get it for $50 from a, another student. So you can definitely save some money there. And then the preparing food and coffee at home. We joke about this in financial aid. We're a little bit cheap. We like to do stuff and save some money. So I prepare coffee at home. I don't buy coffee. Um, I lie a little bit during COVID. I do go to McDonald's, but that's for me to get out of the house. But in the regular time, I, I make my coffee at home. And I go, I make my coffee. I save my money. I don't go to Starbucks but I will treat myself occasionally. But little things like that add up over time and you can save some money. And definitely, definitely, definitely come chat with the financial aid office because we can help guide you either through this or learning how to budget or chatting about our next step. So how can Trent help you? Right now is the best time to go ahead and create that OSAP, OUAC profile link. So this is actually a wonderful feature that OSAP brought out and I'll show you a screen later where it'll pull all of that information from OUAC right into an OSAP application and jumpstart it for you. So that's the very first thing that you can do right now. The prestigious scholarship application, this is our higher valued scholarships. You can apply to those until April 1st and I'll have another screen after that. Between March and August, you're gonna start getting scholarship offer letters from the scholarship office here at Trent. That's as we start to get your high school grades, we can then offer you at a scholarship. For new students starting at Trent, we have our entrance bursary application. So that's free money from Trent. That's an entrance bursary anywhere from 500 to $1,000. Over the summer, you're gonna start looking at external opportunities. You're gonna have a summer job, maybe look at that work study program and you're gonna to start to save some money. And then while you're here at Trent during the school year, we have our in-course bursary applications, which I'll show you here. So we'll chat about scholarships first. Our scholarship program for our entrance scholarships, there's no application. So you don't even have to stress about that. It's based off of your admission average here at Trent. So your top six for you 4M level classes, we get that information. And then you can see on the left-hand side where you would fall. So an 80 to an 84 is $1,000, all the way up to $3,000 if you have a 95 or higher. The bonus to our scholarships is they are renewable. So they're renewable for up to four years of undergraduate studies. And the way to renew your scholarship is you have to achieve an 80% over your five Trent credits. So that means even if you came into Trent with a 90 to 94, you only have to get an 80% over the academic year to renew your scholarship for the following year. 
So that's the wonderful thing about our scholarship program. Our prestigious scholarships, these ones you do have to apply for. Now, you don't have to have accepted your offer to Trent to apply for these scholarships. You can apply, see what the outcome is, and if you are selected as one of the recipients, it would be amazing. We only offer out, I think it's about 16 of them between the four that we have. Our prestigious scholarships, the applications posted through your MyTrim portal up until April 1st. Then all of those applications are presented to our awards committee and they will select the winners. The difference with these scholarships is they're not just looking at grades. So they're looking at your merit, your extracurricular activities, as well as your volunteer experience. So it's your opportunity to sell yourself to make you stand out next to the application that's beside you. So these do start at $37.50 and they go all the way up to $5,000 and they are renewable as well. So just like our other program, they're renewable for up to four years of undergraduate studies and you just have to get an 80% or higher over your five turn credits. So that's scholarships. If you have any questions about them, go ahead and pop them in there. I know Amy will go ahead and answer some of those for you. Now we'll chat about Trent's bursary program. So scholarships is free money based off of your grades. The bursaries is free money based off of your financial need. So bursaries is money that is given to you from the school that you don't have to pay back. It's awarded based off of financial need. And the way we determine financial need is through an OSAP application, or if you are in receipt of government assistance, whether it's through band funding or another province, you must complete our bursary application to be eligible. So the first opportunity is our entrance bursary. This one is a one-time offer to students who are brand new starting at Trent. So you can only apply to this in your first year and it opens in June and it closes the end of July. It ranges from $500 to $1,000. Our in-course bursaries, these are the ones that you would apply for while you're in school. So our bursary application will open in September within the first week of classes. And again, in January within that first week of classes, all OSAP students are eligible to apply as well as, as, well as out of province students. So if you're receiving government assistance, band funding or out of province, you would apply as well and you don't have to know any of our bursaries. We have very, very generous donors, but you don't have to know any of them. You apply, we will pick the bursary that best suits you based off of your application. And they range from 100 to $1,000. So 500 to 1,000 on that first one, 100 to 1,000 on our in-course, which is twice. So you could get $2,000. The next one is our City of Peterborough Award. So this is very specific for our students coming from our local high schools. So it's awarded to the top two students coming from each Peterborough high school. I strongly, strongly encourage all of you high school students to apply for this because what happens is you may think you're not eligible for it, but if no one else from that school applied, guess who's getting it? The top students, top two. So if you're at Kenner and you're the only one at Kenner that applies, you're gonna get $2,000. So go ahead and apply for that. It'll open through the MyTerm portal as well. The last bursary on there is the first generation or indigenous student bursary. So these bursaries we administer for the ministry. So the ministry will provide us funding. We go ahead and administer that out. Again, it's application-based. They get posted in the winter term. So online through the MyTerm portal under the finances tab, that's where you will find all of our bursary applications at any given time of the year. If the bursary is available, that's where it will be posted. Okay, so scholarships and bursaries, that's free money from the school. Now we'll chat about OSAP. So this is where it's a lot of information. I'm going to give you so much information, it's crazy, but again, Pop those questions into the Q&A because 15 minutes to chat about all of the finances is a really short time, but I'm going to go through it and I'm going to go quick. So what is OSAP? OSAP is the Government Student Assistance Program for Ontario residents. The amount of funding for OSAP is based on a number of variables. So don't let somebody tell you that you're not eligible for it without actually doing the OSAP application because everybody's circumstance is different 
And there's a lot of variables that go into that OSAP application. It is a combination of federal and provincial grants and loans. So grants, money you keep that you don't have to pay back, provided you follow all of OSAP's rules, loan, money you do have to pay back. What you're seeing on the left-hand side is the OSAP aid estimator. So if you are a little hesitant, you're not quite sure, you can go ahead and do the aid estimator. It will give you a general idea. What happens though, is any of that information that you put into the aid estimator, if you were to call the financial aid office, I can't see it and I can't troubleshoot it for you. So the best thing to do is to actually do the OSAP application. For new students starting in September, that application should open the end of April, early May. So you wanna do it at that time. This is that link to OUAC. So OSAP got smart a couple of years ago and they figured you're already putting all of that information into OUAC, let's link it into OSAP. When you create this link, it's going to pull all of that information as well as the colleges and universities that you have applied for and the program and it jump starts the OSAP application. So it pulls in all of that tombstone information, your SIN number, your name, your date of birth, and then it pulls in, you apply to Trent for these two programs, you apply to Durham College for these two programs, and it jump starts the OSAP application for you. Makes it super easy. You don't have to stress about any of that information. So make sure you set that link up just to save yourself some time. The OSAP application itself is only four steps, but those four steps can take about 45 minutes. Okay, so don't rush through the OSAP application. If you did the o OUAC link, you already did step one. You already did the school and program. You've already built your profile and you brought in that school and program information. The next part is about you. So some of the sample questions down below is, when did you last attend high school full time? Do you want to identify as a student with a disability? Do you want to identify as a student who's indigenous? What's your status? Are you single? Are you married? Where will you be living? The where will you be living? Answer it honestly. If you think that you're going to live at home when you're in school, indicate at home. If you move during the school year, there is an appeal for that. So that's when you would come chat with the financial aid office because you're gonna be assessed as living at home and now you're moving out. So we can go ahead and adjust that for you. Step three is about your family. So your parents, your spouse, your children. And then step four is where you're going to submit the OSAP application. At step four, you do not have to submit the application right away. So if you're unsure, you can hold off. The only warning about holding off is you will not be assessed for funding until you click submit. Once you click submit, you will not be able to change anything on your OSAP application. All changes now will come through the financial aid office, but the OSAP application now will run its assessment. So that means you'll get an estimate of what your funding will look like. You do not have to submit any paperwork until you're ready to take that OSAP. Ideally, if you're doing this OSAP application in May, you're gonna have an assessment by July, and then you can submit all of that paperwork. You want to have all of your paperwork into the financial aid office no later than the end of July. This allows the month of August for the financial aid office to assess your OSAP application, process your paperwork, have conversations with you. If you feel like your funding is too low, then you would chat with us, but you want to make sure you have it all in by the end of July. There will be signature pages for yourself and your parents if you're a dependent student. OSAP again is now caught up to the times. They've gone electronic. So all of your paperwork, you can retrieve online. So once you click submit, it'll say, Here's required documents. You will click print and you'll get a PDF. You can print them, sign them at home, scan them back in and upload them directly into OSAP, which then comes through to the financial aid office for us to process. So they've caught up. So it's really a seamless process as long as you follow all of the steps. The Master Student Financial Assistance Agreement, that is your agreement with national student loans. So National Student Loans is OSAP's bank. So National Student Loans, you need to create an account with them, and that's where your funding will be deposited. It's also where your, your payments are going to come from when you enter repayment at the end of your studies with OSAP. 
please make sure it's your bank account, not a joint account, not a shared account with mom and dad. What happens is national student loans will not deposit that funding into your bank account if there's another name on that account. They want to ensure that it's your money and it's going to you because there has been issues in the past. So once you click submit, this is that funding summary that you will get. So this student is studying here at Trent. They're in a full-time honors program, and this is for this current academic year. So the student's been assessed to receive $12,479. The grant, that's the free money that they get to keep, is $5,748, and the loans are $6,731. That big arrow there, you do not have to take the loan. If you feel comfortable with just that grant funding, you can opt to put the loan on hold. So it doesn't disappear, it just puts it on hold. So if you make this decision in August, that means your funding released in September will be just the grant portion. The loans will remain on hold. If all of a sudden you are experiencing hardship, let's say in December or January, you can go in and remove that grant funding only option and then the loans will be re released out to you. You have this option until probably about the end of February, beginning of March. It does change that date a little bit, but it doesn't disappear. So it is on hold. So that decision you make in August, if you need it, you can go ahead and remove it. And it shows you there on that hyperlink how this option works. You would just click that. Some important things to note with OSAP is that $12,479 is not released in one installment. It's a 60-40 split. So that means 60% of your funding is released in the fall and 40% in the winter. This is done because they expect you to have a little more expenses in the fall term because you're starting up, whether it's rent first and last, you're buying new textbooks, you're buying household things. They expect you to have a little bit more expenses in September. So it is a 60-40 split. Make sure you read that funding summary. There's another screen in your OSAP, which will show you exactly how much is being released and then once the school has confirmed you, it'll show you how much is going to the school and how much is going to you. Because that's the second part, part there. Funds are automatically released to the school to pay fees first. So if you have a balance due here, so your fall tuition, you paid your deposit, maybe you got a scholarship, but you still owe $3,000, OSAP is going to pay Trent first, and then the difference is going to go into your bank account and you are responsible to ensure that your school fees are paid in full. So you wanna be monitoring your student account. It's online through your MyTerm portal under the finances tab as well, and it's called statement of account. So that's where your billing will happen. That's where your bursaries will be put on. That's where your scholarship will be. You are responsible for that part. So five things to remember about your OSAP is that 60-40 split. So if OSAP is your only source of income while you're in school, you want to make sure you're comfortable with a budget because you will have that shortfall in the winter term. So make sure that you are budgeting accordingly. Any changes that you need to report to your OSAP, they come through the MyTerm portal. So online through that MyTerm portal again, we have an OSAP change form. Anytime you change your course load or your income changes, Maybe there's something with your parents. Maybe your parents lost their job. Maybe you had to move out. All of that through the MyTerm portal under that OSAP change form. You do not need to report your Trent scholarship to OSAP. So there is a, a section there in the income that asks about award income. You do not have to report your Trent scholarships or bursaries. Trent will do that for you on the back end. And you must always be in a 1.5 credit course load. So that means, whoops, sorry about that. It means that, sorry, my little people here are in the way of my screen. I can't see the bottom. Um, you must always be in a full-time course load. So here at Trent for OSAP purposes, that's 1.5 credits in a semester. So that's a 60% course load. That's full-time to OSAP. If you don't meet that requirement, an OSAP update is required. And if you fall to part-time, you risk losing your funding. The last part there is you must reapply for OSAP every year. So OSAP does not automatically know that you're in school and you are not going to get automatically reconsidered for the following year. The OSAP application always opens the summer before your September starts. So you must apply every year.
other sources and resources. So we've looked at free money from Trent for scholarships, which is your academic, free money from Trent for bursaries, which is financial need. We've looked at OSAP, which is that combination of, of student loans and student grants through that program. Now we're gonna look outside. So outside of Trent, you're gonna chat with your high school guidance office. They know a lot of opportunities there. They would know local opportunities. You wanna chat with them. Maybe your parents' place of employment has a scholarship or bursary that they offer out to employees' children. Scholarships Canada, Wyconic, Scholar Tree, Grant Me, University Study, and Disability Awards. All of those websites are databases. So what used to happen is if a company wanted to give a scholarship or a bursary to a student, they would come around to every school and say, can you give this application to all of your students? They've now created these databases. So the joke that I make is, if you have time to be on Snapchat or TikTok or whatever it happens to be, you have time to go to these websites, create a profile and start applying. Because if you think you're not eligible, a lot of these scholarships aren't just academic based. There was one that was creating a dress out of like different textiles and stuff. So if academics aren't your thing, maybe that's your thing. Or maybe there's an odd one where you have to be five one with dark hair. Well, that's me. I'm, uh, I'm gonna apply for that one and maybe it's $500. Again, that's free money to help you go to school. The RESP and personal savings, now it's the time to start chatting with your parents. Do you have a registered education savings plan? If so, how much is in there and how much do you want to draw out? If you have $10,000 and you're studying for four years, but you're gonna live in res on that first year, maybe you want a little bit more in first year. You also wanna chat with them about gifts and contributions. Are they gonna help you while you're in school? You can't just all of a sudden call mom and dad and say, I'm short on rent, I need $800. That's just not, it's not fair. So maybe chat with them and say, can you help me out with groceries? Maybe $100 a month or my birthday's coming up. Can I get some gift cards to the bookstore or to gas or to the grocery store? All those little things will add up and take some stress off of you. The next one there is the private loans or student line of credit. Anytime a student tells us that they are going to do that, we always ask, did you try OSAP first? Please try OSAP first. OSAP's program is a lot more flexible. You don't start repayment until six months after you cease to be a full-time student. So that means if you study full-time all four years, it's six months after that fourth year. OSAP also has that combination of loans and grants, which means that grant portion you don't have to repay. So you get that $12,000, that student's only repaying 5,000. Student line of credit and private loans, not the same. The interest rates, you need a co-signer. They want you to start making payments while you're still in school. So the flexibility isn't there. Employment, look at a summer job. Also look at that work study program. Start applying for those. Maybe you can get an opportunity here on campus and chat or visit the student experience portal through your MyTrim portal. So how to prepare, we've already done that. So you're doing it today. You're sitting here, you're listening to me chat with you. You're, even if you think that you're not gonna do any of this, my goal is just to plant little seeds there so that maybe you go, oh, right. She said about scholarshipscanada.com, I should do that. Or I was supposed to apply for that entrance bursary. I hope I didn't miss it. Don't miss it. Even if you haven't accepted your offer, don't miss it, still apply. Um, you wanna start planning, so plan now. Use that aid estimator on the OSAP website. And remember, OSAP is not designed to cover all of those expenses. They expect you to come as well with some money towards your education. Create a budget, have those conversations with your parents. How are they going to help you? Do you have an RESP? Look at all those external awards and scholarships and apply, apply, apply. The worst that's gonna happen is you're gonna get a no. The best that's gonna happen is you're getting some free money out there. Be aware of how much you spend. There are a lot of wonderful apps you can get on your phone right now. Now, you guys are a little bit different because it's COVID, but I'm sure a lot of you are still spending on Amazon. Put it into that budget and just see what it looks like. How much am I spending? And then where can I save on there? And find your financial aid office. We're in Blackburn. You can come chat with us anytime. We actually love when people come and chat with us about money. You can come to Blackburn. You can chat with the recruitment, the student accessibility office, our finance office is there, but definitely just come in and say, hey, did I miss a bursary deadline? And we'll definitely chat with you about that. So any questions, pop those into the chat. Amy can also go ahead and pop in our email address so that it's there. So when I take this screen away, 
And we also have our scholarship one there and our phone number. So you're welcome to call us anytime. And that is it for me. So let me try and figure out how to get this. Stop sharing. There we go. Where were you when I was in grade 12? My goodness, I have learned so much from 30 minutes. Danielle, thank you so much yes. uh, for that mini lecture. Again, it's something that usually uh, people don't necessarily put too much thought into, but it's so integral. It's so mm -hmm. uh, necessary and important, especially when you're fueling your education and investing into your future. So again, on behalf of myself, at least, thank you for that, truly. Um, for those of you who are joining us, this is our live stream where we are focusing on anything and everything finance. Uh, a little bit of OSAP in here. We had some talks about some scholarships and bursaries that are available with a focus on domestic undergraduate applicants as well. We're gonna go into our formal q and I have here a handful of questions lined up for Danielle and Emma here. Um, again, if you are joining us, feel free to throw in your questions into our Q&A and we'll get to it as soon as we're done these questions. So diving right into it. Um, and this one's gonna be for Danielle essentially. I had to go through uh, this process by myself. Um, there wasn't that many resources for me when I was applying um, and a lot of the jargon was new. My question would essentially be one, um, how does Trent assist students when it comes to applying for OSAP? Are they kind of just left to their own demises or is there support available? So we can't sit with a student when they do the OSAP application just because it's a conflict. But what we tell students is when you do the OSAP application, there's a bunch of hyperlinks in there. You can save at any time. So don't feel pressured to have to get it through and get it submitted. And if you get stuck, just call the financial aid office. So if you read that hyperlink, you're not quite sure, am I dependent or independent? And what does it mean by award income? go ahead and save it and call the financial aid office and we'll chat with you. We just can't sit side by side with you, but we welcome all of the questions because the worst that you want to happen is you submit it and then it causes a big kerfuffle at the end that needs a lot of documentation to go ahead and correct. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Emma, hi. Welcome to the hot seat. Um, <laughs> Now, in that mini lecture, we talked about a variety of different things, and one of them um, was budgeting. There's so many different variables when it comes to your education. And my question for you um, is essentially, how did applying to OSAP enable you to meet those financial needs for university? Yeah, so uh, hi, everybody. Um, before I get going on answering that, Danielle, thank you so much. Um, I wish I had tuned in a little bit more when I was in grade 12, too, but I've come a long way since then. Um, Danielle did touch on a couple of points that I, again, will reiterate, especially as a student. So essentially, without OSAP, I don't believe I realistically would have comfortably been able to go to school and not be constantly stressed out. So it's actually allowed me to pursue an education, do something that I've always wanted to do, and then now eventually be able to think about higher education past my undergraduate degree. Now, another thing that Danielle mentioned was, um, you know, people sometimes having to do loans with separate banks instead of OSAP. The nice thing about OSAP is I wasn't stressed out and I am not stressed out about paying back interest while I'm in school. So the student jobs that Danielle mentioned as well, that's currently what I'm doing. So I'm able to get that experience without having to work more than 10 hours a week and not be able to focus on my studies. So OSAP has been able to allow me to succeed in terms of my academics because I'm not stressed out about how I'm going to pay for things. And then the last thing, like I said, I wasn't able to, I didn't have to worry about focusing on finances. And so realistically, it's allowed me to enjoy my university experience more so than ever, because again, I'm not overly stressed out past the point that I need to be. What I'm focused on right now is the paper that I have to write by Monday, not how I'm going to pay my rent. So it's given me a lot of opportunity to be able to explore and grow to my fullest potential. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much, Emma. Um, I'm gonna shift gears and go back to Danielle for a little bit, um, mainly because uh, this is a little bit more OSAP specific. Um, when I was in grade 12, OSAP was very different. 
Um, the slides that you put on, I did not recognize. <laughs> That's how old I am. Um, so my question for you, because you've kind of seen all of these different reiterations um, and had to, you know, sit down and talk to uh, students from all different uh, walks of life and experiences, what's the most common OSAP questions that you get from students? Um, why am I not getting enough? <laughs> it's probably, it's, it's one of the, the biggest ones. And that's why we always stress to students, like um, the program, like you said, has changed drastically. Even I had it, I'm not gonna tell you when I had it, but it didn't look anything like it does now. Um, and I've been doing OSAC for almost 10 years and every year it changes. So it's never the same. That's why we always tell students to apply because the assessment that you may have gotten last year could be very different from this upcoming year. You could see the grants be really high one year, but then low a following year. But a lot of the most common questions are, um, why am I not getting OSAP? And that if you come to us with that question and you have an OSAP application on file, we can definitely troubleshoot it for you. Um, like we said earlier, one of the most common mistakes is students put um, incoming incorrectly. So in the income section for the parents, it'll say not to put decimals. And what a student will do is they'll write 50,000 decimal zero zero. OSAP doesn't like that. And OSAP will pull that decimal out and it now says that your parent makes 500,000. So you've got a zero assessment and that's why you're not getting any funding. But I, I think that's a lot of preconceptions about OSAP and what the program itself looks like, or maybe a parent had a bad, um, a bad situation with OSAP in the past and they're hesitant about having their children apply. We just say, chat with us come, you can ask us anything. If you've got that OSAP application on the system, we can definitely guide you. We can maybe find appeals, like maybe a parent retired and they're not making the same income, or maybe um, the children are wrong or your circumstances have changed. Just, just come check. Any question, we welcome it. And we will definitely do our best to try and help you maneuver the, the OSAP application to, to your benefit for sure. Awesome, thank you, Danielle. Um... Emma, hi, back in the hot seat there. Uh, contrary to popular belief, we not the same age. Who would have thought? Um, so you have uh, more of a recent experience with OSAP and the application process and what goes into it. So my question for you would be, do you have any tips or tricks or advice for students that are going through that process and applying to OSAP for the first time? Read. Read what OSAP provides for you. It is there for a reason. You may be like, this is really boring. I don't want to read through all of this. It doesn't matter. Read through it. Like this is something that you're going to want to put time and effort into education and like furthering your education past high school is an investment. You need to be able to understand what's going on whenever you sign documents for government loans. Okay, make sure you understand what's happening and reading that through is going to help you even a little bit. And then that leads into my next point. If you don't understand something, reach out and ask questions. Okay, like Danielle has said this the whole time, reach out and ask questions. I swear I was probably the most annoying student the financial aid office has ever dealt with. I was like, um, hello, yes, I don't understand this. And they were so nice and sat and explained it to me but reach out and ask those questions. Even if you're not sure if you may know the answer or you don't know how something works, just ask whether it's an email or phone call, somebody is there to help you. That's what Danielle and her colleagues are there for is to help you, okay? And so um, my final tip is, again, Danielle's touched on this all the way through the presentation, please just apply. Even if you think there's a 5% chance you're going to get it, just apply because you have no idea. You just, just uh, there's no harm in applying and potentially getting funding or even feedback. The worst that they could say is no. And then that's when you move into chat with somebody like Danielle and say, okay, well, why is this happening? But she can't help you unless you do the application. So we're going to read, ask questions, and apply. John's got it. Okay. Yeah. That, those are my tips. I'll, I'll add there that it, 
there have been many times where a student comes into the financial aid office just to chat with us. And we'll all of a sudden, we're looking at your application at the same time. So you're chatting, you think we're not listening, but then all of a sudden you'll say something like, well, I just moved out. And we go, well, when did you move out? And you'll say, well, just in December. And we go, oh, well, on your OSAP, you're still living at home. So that right there is a change in your OSAP funding that is could be about $5,000 because now you're paying rent. So you didn't think about it or do the change form, but just by coming and chatting with us, we're just listening and we're gonna ask you 30 questions. You're gonna feel like you're in the hot seat, but our questions are very specific because we know the OSAP application and we're looking and we're trying to just listen. And you're gonna let something like that slip out innocently that you just, you you moved out. We're like, ah, appeal. And now we're gonna, we're gonna do that. So like Emma said, just come chat. Just, just come let us listen to your story. We're not, we're not bitter people, we're not evil people. You know, I like to think we're pretty welcoming. Um, and again, I echo everything Emma and Danielle has said. Um, a lot of people say life is a movie. There's a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and you don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Right? So you might be that award winner. Um, you might be that individual that qualifies for that um, bursary or that prize, right? But you're never going to know until you get comfortable being uncomfortable and put yourself out there. Um, I just really, really wanted to reiterate that point. Um, and we're gonna close off this formal Q&A with Danielle um, because it also seems fitting just based on that uh, conversation that we just had or that tangent, excuse me. If students have any questions, how can they get in contact with us? So unfortunately our, our in-person is, is unavailable right now, um, but it doesn't mean that we're not available. So we still have our phones and we still have emails. So you can email us and call us at any time. If you don't get us on the phone, don't stress. We have voicemail, we return within 24 hours, but um, those are your best options currently. When we are back in the office, do come see us because we are going to be lonely for face-to-face -face conversations. <laughs> so come chat with us and, and don't, don't stress so much. Like even if you have to call us, money is hard to talk about. The more that you talk about it, the easier it will become. And just remember that you're advocating for yourself. So if you're coming into our office, you're advocating for you so that you can pay for your schooling. We don't want you to sit there stressed out. And if it is just a simple email of, did I miss applying for OSAP? Or is there a bursary available right now? Or I'm struggling and I need to chat. Just, just send us the email and, and or give us a phone call and we welcome it and we're not mean and we're not crazy and we're not like we're not judgy at all we just we really we really care and we just want to make sure that that you're doing good ditto <laughs> <laughs> all i can say is ditto uh danielle emma thank you so much for uh taking the time to answer these formal q a's um it's <sighs> It's, I, I think it's, it's always needed, it's always necessary to have those tough conversations with ourselves um, to put ourselves in a better place. So I really, really like that point that you made of advocating for yourself, Danielle, truly. Um, we're gonna move directly into our informal Q&A because I see a lot of questions. Um, you guys have gone above and beyond and this is exactly what we're looking for. So we're just going to go and dive right into it. The first question, something that I see um, a lot in Emma as well, just because of our position in the recruitment department. Um, and that question goes as follows. I'm also not seeing any names just for uh, safety and confidentiality. But the question is, I'm not from Ontario. Would I still use OSAP? So in order to be eligible for OSAP, you do have to be an Ontario resident. So if you're studying or from another province, let's say you're in Alberta, you would chat with Alberta Student Aid or BC Student Aid um, because that's your home province. And that would still all come through the financial aid office and you're still eligible for all of our bursaries. But to be an OSAP recipient, you have to be an Ontario resident. So you have to have lived here for a period of time without being in post-secondary education. Thank you. Uh, next question, can you get a scholarship if you are a mature student? <laughs> yes. So um, we do uh, assess based off of admin admission average. So we say for high school students, it's the top six for UM level classes. If you're transferring in from another institution, then we would use those grades. 
but definitely chat with our admissions team to um, understand how that calculation is done for you. And you can just email them admissions at trentu.ca and they'll go through all of that with you. But yes, we do um, look at mature students as well. Absolutely. Uh, next question, are students in the uh, consecutive B ed program or the teacher education stream um, eligible for prestigious scholarships? No. <laughs> Unfortunately, the BEAD program is a second entry program. So our prestigious scholarships, those are geared um, towards um, first entry. Um, so unfortunately, no, but um, to uh, chat with the BEAD and they can um, point you in the direction of their own awards that they have or if they know other external opportunities. Now, I know that we have a teacher education stream, which takes That's under that. Yeah, so so the, the teacher education stream falls under the honors arts, so under the first century um, undergraduate program. So yes, in that regard, but not the specific B ed program. Awesome. Thank you for the clarification. Um, next question for our prestigious scholarships. Is there supplementary documentation required, um, for example, a CV? There used to be, but we changed the program a couple of years ago. So the application does not require that. It's essay based now. So um, you would need to go on there and you would complete an essay, no uploads required. Sure, for sure. Uh, next question that we have here, what is the deadline for the City of Peterborough Award? I wanna say it's June 30th. I wanna say that. I'm not 100% sure I should know this, but it will open up through the MyTerm portal. We always tell students, don't ask me the deadline date, or ask me the date that it opens, because I don't want you to know that one. <laughs> I just want you to know the date it opens, but you apply right away. But um, go ahead, it should open. I believe it's in May or June that it'll be there through the MyTerm portal. Sure, absolutely. Um, next question here. Um, Individual writes in, uh, one of their caregivers uh, is on ODSP and they come from a fairly large family for them being the eldest as well. Um, and their parents bring in um, less than, I wanna say uh, $50,000 mm -hmm. uh, just for hypotheticals. Yep. Um, what are they eligible for? Um, more specifically, what are they eligible for if they are going to the Durham campus? So uh, you're eligible for the same stuff at the Durham campus, are you? At, uh, at Peterborough campus. The only difference is that City of Peterborough award because that is um, our Peterborough based, but you can still apply for OSAP, you still apply for bursaries and you're still eligible for scholarships. Um, with that financial family situation, definitely apply for OSAP. Um, they do take that into consideration, how many children are in the family, what parents' income is and how many in post-secondary. So that information will go on to there as part of your assessment, but apply for everything and then look at all of those external opportunities as well so that disability awards scholarships canada all of those go ahead and, and take a look at all of those absolutely thank you uh next question i currently have osap uh for college do i need to start a new osap profile for trent university not a new profile just when you apply for osap you'll change the school so instead of it being durham college you would then select um trent as your school and follow the application just like normal. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, next question here. Can we get any scholarships for our grade 12 prerequisite courses? Um, that you would have to chat with the admissions team just to see what they're using in the calculations. So they're using your top six for you 4M level classes. So if those prereqs are in there and that's part of that admission average, that's the information that I'm getting in the scholarship office. So I would email them and just chat and see if that's going to be a part of it. Absolutely. Um, not sure if we answered this question or if it was posed in your, um, in your lecture and our Q and A's, but is there a deadline to apply for OSAP? So if you are looking to study for the 21-22, which sounds crazy to say, academic year, the application will open in May. Ideally, you want to have it done by the end of July for your September start. The deadline, which I hate to tell you, is in February of 2022. Please do not wait until February of 2022. You will be stressed out. Um, do the OSAP application the summer before. Make sure it's done. But February of 2022 is your deadline. There we go. 
the same way um, I used to get excited for field trips is the same way that I approach deadlines, especially when talking to anybody. If you care about it, if it's important to you, you're going to make time for it. You're going to circle it in your calendar. And this is one of those things, right? So make sure that you have all of your ducks in a row before that deadline, because speaking from experience, it is not a fun place to be. Yeah. <laughs> I just have to put that out there. Um, next question, can you decide halfway through the year that you want to take the loan from OSAP? Yes. So if you put that on hold in August and you say you don't want the loan, but like I said in my presentation, you start to experience hardship, you can go in and remove that up until February. So if it's in November, December, January, whatever it is, that loan will get released to you. If you don't use it all, repay it. You have that option to repay back to your OSAP at any point. So if it is $6,000 a loan and you really only needed three and you still have it left over and you want to repay it, go ahead and make that payment to National Student Loans. Absolutely. And that's a good answer because it leads us into our next question. Um, can you choose to take only a portion of the loans from OSAP or do you have to take the full amount every time? you have to take the full amount. So we can't control that. We can't say they're eligible for 6,000. We just wanna release three. Um, it's an all or nothing at that point when you remove that option. But like I said, if you only need a portion of it, just tuck it into your bank account. And at the end of the year, if you still don't need it, go ahead and, and repay it back to OSAP and it just comes off that loan. You won't have to pay later. Thank you. I feel good right Right now, because I'm three and zero with these uh, consecutive questions. Um, another great OSAP question too: Can you take more than one loan from OSAP during the year? So instead of taking out one big lump sum, taking out smaller increments um, and in installments. No, I I wish that OSAP had flexibility like that, but I think logistically it would be a nightmare um, trying to keep track. They do that 60-40 split, so it's 60% in the fall, 40% in the winter, whether you choose to take just the grants or, or um, to, to take that full amount. Um, it would just not be easy for us to, to navigate that to say, oh, they only need 500 now and now another thousand. So if you opt for no loan, you do it in August, you can take it off up to February. But outside of that, you'll see under the funding summary exactly how much is going to go out to you. So you can budget, tuck it away into a bank account. It's your money. If you don't need it, repay it. But yeah, unfortunately, no, we can't. <laughs> we can't do that. Decide how much goes out over time. Absolutely. Um, if you use OSAP, uh, can you use only the grants um, or do you have to take the loans and the grants throughout post-secondary? And I think we answered that question earlier. Um, again, the grants are there for you. Um, you don't have to pay it back. If you don't want to take the loan, you don't have to. However, if you do come into some kind of situation, again, life is crazy mm -hmm. as evident. Um, you can absolutely go in and use that loan. Um, but again, it has to be the whole uh, amount. It can't be installments. Danielle, how did I do? You did great. <laughs> you passed. Met provincial standards, let's go. <laughs> Um, next question, are there any sports scholarships or bursaries offered? There are. So if you chatted with our athletics department, they can chat with you more about our um, green and white scholarships or our Sharat bursaries. There are a bunch there for varsity students. There are some for extracurriculars, but um, you do have to apply for them. There's a good portion of them that are application based. So, um, for example, our one for a rugby player through our bursary program is you have to apply for that in-course bursary to be considered, but athletics has their own as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, next question. Does OSAP charge interest? Yes. However, OSAP charges interest when you are not a student. So let's say you take OSAP in that first year. So you are considered a full-time student from September to April. As of May 1st, you're not considered a student. If you're not studying, you're not a student. Um, interest will then start to calculate from May until September. You have to let OSAP know that you're back in school. You do that two ways. You either apply for OSAP again, or you apply for interest-free status. Either one of those will tell OSAP that you're back in school as a full-time student and that interest from May to September is not applied. It falls away 
and you're back into your interest-free program. If you don't tell OSAP or you're late in telling OSAP, let's say you're one of those students that waits till the very end to apply, that interest now is from May to November because now that six months is up, it gets applied and now OSAP's gonna ask for a payment from you in November. So that's why it's important, like Emma said, to apply early, get that OSAP application so that you stay in that interest-free status. But they do charge interest at the end of your studies. It's prime plus one, I believe right now, um, but you don't have to start making payments until you're done your studies. Absolutely, thank you. Um, next question here, how can I apply for the TWSP, so the Trent Work Study Program, um, and how will you know um, that I, well, that essentially they have been enrolled in said program? So there is no application for TWSP per se. So there are jobs that will have that requirement and it will say you have to be TWSP eligible. It's all done on the back end in our office. So to be eligible for that program, you have to be in receipt of OSAP or government funding um, through another province. Our office then sees that. We will then send you an email and it's your TWSP card. So that's what you would then present to an employer if you are going for a work study program position. So you don't have to apply at all. Just make sure your OSAP's in good standing and ready to go in September. That would be one of those things you missed if you waited too late. Absolutely. Uh, next question, can we apply for these scholarships if we do not have an offer, seeing as it is possible to get an offer in late May? Yes, 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 yes. Um, we have quite a few that apply for our prestigious scholarships that don't have offers from Trent or they haven't accepted their offer from Trent. Um, if finances is something that's um, a decision for you, um, maybe you're, you're entertaining a couple schools and you're not quite sure, apply for everything that's offered from every school. You don't have to accept a your offer and that goes with OSAP too. So if you are entertaining Trent and a few other schools, you don't have to have accepted your offer to do your OSAP application at all of those schools. They want you to have that full picture when you're making the decision. So, yep, apply for everything. You don't have to be a, a student here yet to do that. Awesome, awesome. Follow-up question. Um, does the OSAP slash OUAC link that we discussed uh, previously uh, take in the program that you've been accepted uh, to and that you're committing to, or does it take into account all of the offers that you have? So what they're looking at is if you applied to Trent and you applied for forensics and you applied for um, psychology, then it would jumpstart two OSAP applications at Trent for those two programs. So they're not looking at whether you accept it or not. They're just looking at what school did you apply to, what program, and they jumpstart the OSAP application. Absolutely. Uh, next question, how does OSAP deal with custody over a child? So students coming and studying with a, uh, with a dependent child. So that would fall under your current status. So when you get to that section and it'll ask you, are you um, single? Are you a dependent student? Are you married? Or are you school support? Um, what they're looking at is if you are the primary caregiver of a child, you're considered school support if you're not married or if you're not in a common law relationship. So that would be where that would fall under. So if you are married, you would say married, they'll say, do you have any dependent children? You would say yes, and then you would follow the steps. If you're not married or common law, then you would say you're a sole support, how many children? And then they'll ask for documentation. So documentation could be an affidavit that shows that you're the primary caregiver. And that's what OSAP would take in as proof of you being the primary caregiver of that child so that the dependent can be on there. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, next question, can your office also help with other provinces aid programs? We can. So we get a lot of it as student or at a province students. We do all of those confirmations. Um, again, er, the application itself, we can't see. Um, like OSAP, we can only see our trend OSAP students. We can't see other schools OSAP students. Out of province, everything is done through that province's system, but we would administer the confirmation of enrollment for you. You would apply for bursaries. If you have questions about your funding, we can reach out to them to chat, but um, you're essentially doing that part, that application on your own on your side. 
Mm -hmm. And just to clarify, um, there's no one specific person in financial aid that deals with out of province. They can talk to anybody there, correct? Right. And if you come in and in, uh, there are some of us that are a little bit more familiar, Joan has a really strong out of province um, foundation. It doesn't mean that Amy and I don't know. She might just know a little bit more and, and we would just make sure you get in touch with the right person. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, thank you, Zach. There you go. That's a quick little shout out for Zach. Um, what is the personal cap for receiving OSAP? I know that if you make a certain amount, they won't give you any funding or less funding. So that's a, um, that's a loaded question. Um, only because, so let's see. There isn't necessarily a cap and there isn't necessarily a, if you make more than this, you're not going to get OSAP because the circumstances are different. So let's say Emma is in a, a full-time program. She's living away from home, but her parents, because she's a dependent student's income is really low. Emma might get a lot more than someone who's in the same circumstances, but their parents make a little bit more money. Or let's say that other student has more award income than Emma or that other student worked more during the summer than Emma. What they've done to try and equalize it is they expect the same from all students. They expect all students to come with $3,600 in savings, whether that's a job or award income, they expect you to come with that. So they've tried to equalize it that way, but with the parents on there and your living arrangements, those figures can change the assessment. So it's really hard to say that there's a cap or there's a maximum. That's why we say just go ahead and apply and make sure that you have that on there because they're also looking at your income too. So Emma may have worked really hard and had really high income where that other student didn't, right? So there's a lot of uh, things on there to consider. For sure. Um, I feel kind of awkward now because that's essentially the next question. What is the maximum income to apply for OSAP? It's really hard. Like. A few years ago, we used to, um, they did that Ontario tuition grant. Does anybody remember that? And um, we saw some students whose parents' income was over 160,000 and they were still getting OSAP. So it's really, really hard to say. I just recommend applying. Just apply and, and see what it looks like. If you don't wanna take it, you go in and you close the application, don't submit any paperwork, but at least then you would know. It's, it's really tough. For sure. And just to clarify, there's no fees to apply for OSAP even and get that quote. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, next question. If I have an RESP, will that affect my chances of receiving OSAP? It does not. You used to have to report your RESP, um, but now that's just part of your contribution to your education. So that would be, that would count towards your 3600 is, is your RESP. So no, you don't have to report it. Awesome. Uh, next question. What do I do if I'm living at home, but paying uh, for my education on my own? Uh, could my parents' income make me not eligible? So you are considered a dependent student up until six years out of high school. So right now, if you're coming out of high school, six years from 2021 is when you're considered independent by OSAT standards. Um, if you're living at home and you're paying your own education, there may still be an expected contribution from your parents based off of their income. Whether they're meeting that or not, that is, <clears throat> sorry, that's a conversation with your parents. There is a lot of students whose parents don't meet that contribution, but if you're living at home, they're kind of meeting it that way. They're putting a roof over your head. Um, yes, you're paying for your own education, but their income does still have to go onto the OSAP application to be part of that consideration. For sure, for sure. Um, if I choose my program to be predominantly online or strictly online, will that affect my OSAP? No. The, the big thing that they're looking at for OSAP is the tuition cost. So OSAP looks at all of those educational expenses, which is what the school puts in. So when you are selecting your school and your program on the back end, the school's already plugged in all of that education information, your tuition, your books and supplies. That's all already there. Online or not, it's the fees. Yeah, that are the factor. For sure. Um, next question here. How would OSAP funding work if you are enrolled in the compressed nursing program? So it works the exact same. The only extra difference is 
most nursing students study in the summer. So you'll do a fall winter OSAP application because you can't tax summer on at that time. In February and March is when you would then do your OSAP application for the summer term. But that's the big thing with nursing students is their three term for, for that two and a half years. So that would be the big change for your OSAP. Just make sure you choose nursing as your program and then remember to apply in March for summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next question, is there a Durham-based uh, scholarship for the Trent GTA campus the same way that there is a Peterborough High School scholarship? <clears throat> I wish there was. <laughs> there is not yet, but as that Trent Durham campus keeps growing, we know that that bursary and scholarship program is growing as well. So they're getting a lot of generous donors out there. And I think it's just a matter of time before all of those kind of um, scholarships and bursaries that are specific for Trent Durham students get set up. So be patient, maybe next year. For sure. Um, switching gears a little bit, uh, stepping away from the OSAP realm for just a couple questions here. Um, with regards to applying for bursaries, uh, do students have to apply separately for the fall and winter or will the application be valid for the whole school year? So we have students apply both terms just because your circumstances could change. So if we assessed you in September for your whole year and then something changes in January, we wouldn't be aware of that. Um, so you would apply within the first week of classes each term that you're in attendance and receiving OSAP. So first week in September, it'll stay open for the month of September. First week in January, it stays open for the month of January. And again, in the summer, if you choose to study. So we then open it up again in May. And we also have an appeal process as well. So if you happen to miss the deadline, we do have an appeal process, or if there's extenuating circumstances, then you would reach out to us and we would chat about that appeal process. For sure. Uh, next question here, uh, what grants can I apply to as a person with a permanent disability? If you are a student with a permanent disability on your OSAP application, you can indicate that and you'll automatically be considered for the disability grant through the OSAP program once your documentation is approved. So there's a disability verification form that would have to go to your doctor to be filled out. And then you would upload that back into OSAP to be approved. And then you would see a CSG-PD grant. So that's your disability grant and it's $4,000. Awesome, thank you. Um, probably the most important question of the night. Uh, when will OSAP send me my money? So, uh, <clears throat> In September, we start confirming students 10 days before your studies start. So if your studies start September 11th, we're already confirming the end of August to make sure that that money is into your bank account when you start classes. If it's not, it just means we have sheer volume and uh, we're plugging away through them. And we do the same um, for January. We actually start confirming students before we go on Christmas break so that students have their money when they start classes in January. Awesome. Uh, next question. What is the maximum income should my parents, uh, that my parents should have in order to apply for OSAP? Or is there even a maximum income to begin with? No, and there's no minimum. So it's just when you put in your parents' income, what they're looking at is, <clears throat> sorry, the parent situation, are they married, what their income is, and they use the previous year. So for 2021, they're going to use 2020 income. And if there are circumstances that have changed, maybe your parent was laid off. Um, so their 2021 income isn't going to be the same as 2020. That's when you're going to chat with us because there could be an appeal for that. But there is there's no maximum. You, you just want to make sure you, you go ahead and apply and let the system do its thing. For sure. Uh, next question. What is the average leftover expenses after the four years of studying uh, once well, school is over? say for example, in honors arts programs, um, who stays in residence, what would that leftover look like? Is there a leftover uh, when we're talking expenses? I, I'm not quite sure I understand the question, like leftover expenses, you mean? So any, I, I'm assuming it's anything that doesn't include residence, tuition and ancillary fees. I, I guess, <clears throat> Sorry, I guess it would just be like your personal expenses then like you still have your tuition, your books and your auxiliary fees and then you would you have your residence costs on top of that. Um, but then I guess it would be anything that you're you're spending your money on. Are you 
meal plan would probably be the next big thing I could think of. Or are you putting extra money onto your trunk card to help pay for printing or parking or whatever it happens to be? But those would be the extra expenses. Do a budget. And if you're unsure about anything, um, definitely look into it. I can tell you parking is a huge thing. Transit, make sure you take that into consideration. Even if you live on campus, um, you want to know, do I have to pay for parking if I drive my car? Like all those extra little things like that. I think that's the answer. Mm -hmm. I also want to draw a double emphasis on budgeting. It is so important. This is a perfect time to start. If you have a part-time job, if you're getting an allowance, just learn to really invest your money for the future you. Um, sorry, I just had to plug that in there. <laughs> um, next question, uh, can I apply for OSAP if my program is part-time? Yes, so OSAP does have a part-time OSAP program. The only difference between part-time OSAP and full-time OSAP is full-time OSAP provides a living allowance, part-time OSAP doesn't. Part-time OSAP is designed just to help with um, the tuition and book costs because if you're studying part-time, they assume that you're working. So they're just looking to help subsidize that, that um, the tuition and books. And the bonus to part-time is it's mostly grant money. It, it's awesome. We tell a lot of students, even in the summer, if you don't think that you wanna take a course and you're already here, take uh, one course in the summer, do part-time OSAP and you kind of went to school for free. For sure. Uh, next question, will my scholarship be affected if my guidance counselor isn't updating marks um, as regularly as anticipated with everything else that's going on? Um, no, rest assured, um, we do it a, a couple times because we know that there is a delay. So we're doing it right now in March. So there will be a first batch going out over the next week or so. If we don't have grades at that time, we're going to look at you again in August and then um, we should we should have all of that information on our system. And if for whatever reason you don't hear from us in August, you can always send an email to scholarships. If there was a delay or maybe you did some upgrading over the summer that caused a little bit of delay of getting those grades in there, we'll just double check you. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, next question, we touched on this um, a little bit earlier on in our Q&A, but I feel like it's also nice to kind of get that refresher. Um, how would OSAP deal with um, an individual being a child of joint custody? So under the parents section of the OSAP, um, one of the very first questions, and this is another section that really trips students up. The question is going to ask if your parents are married to each other. They are not talking about biology they are talking about custody. So if your parents are separated and you live with mom, the answer would be no, they're not married to each other. If mom is remarried, the answer is yes. So then you would put mom and new step parent on and biological dad does not get reported to OSAP. So it can be a little bit tricky with that part of it. If it is a joint custody and you share 50-50 between mom and dad, you get to pick whichever one you want to put on there. Um, just make sure you read the question carefully. And if you're unsure, check that hyperlink. If you're still unsure, give us a call and we'll chat about this situation and we can help guide you a little bit better. Sure. Uh, next question here, are IEPs transferred or part of university at all? Um, I can take this question if you'd like. Um, IEPs, are absolutely recognized at Trent University. Um, you would be essentially working with our student accessibility service, so SAS, but not like SAS. Um, and through there, you work uh, with a variety of different faculty and staff members to make sure that you have the resources that you need um, and that your IEPs are also being recognized both inside and outside of the classroom as well. One of the big things that I always tell students is we don't know what you need until you tell us what you need. Right, um, it's a lot uh, more advantageous, and it also um, allows for your stress levels to come to get a little bit lowered if you reach out to us earlier on, even in the spring or in the summer, to introduce yourself um, and also get connected with all these different staff members, uh, so that in turn you're ready to go in the fall and you're able to be the best student that you can be. I think I covered everything. Yeah, awesome. You're doing great. Perfection. Next question. Do I have to report on my RRSP uh, or any personal savings? Will that affect my OSAP application? You do have to report it. Um, it's under your income section. The RRSP is there and the personal savings. 
the question will have a specific date. So they will ask what you have in your savings account as of a certain date, um, only because that's part of that contribution, again, that they're asking you for. The RRSP, it does have a slight impact on your OSAP, but that, again, is not money that's easy to just um, pull out. So they do understand that. Um, but yeah, it, it does have to go on there. Mm -hmm. uh, next question. Uh, and I know this is a question that pops up a lot when I'm on the road. Um, if I take the OSAP loan um, and make sure to pay it back before I finish my studies. So, you know, working six, you know, a summer job or two summer jobs. Does that mean um, that it is completely interest free? Yeah. The best time to repay your OSAP actually is when you're in school. So if you're in school and you have um, OSAP funding left over, like let's say that situation where you took the loan, but you didn't need it all. Uh, if you repay it while you're still in school, there's no interest on it at all. Um, if you repay it while you're in your interest-free period, that six months, there's no interest on it. So yeah, you could essentially stay interest-free the entire time and repay it and not have paid any interest. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, I'm going to ask for the help of both Emma and Danielle for this next question. Um, is it cheaper to have a car or to live in residence, or is it better to not have a car altogether? And also, can you give us a, bit, a little bit of tips about budgeting while being a student? You want me to go first, Emma? <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, uh, residence is good. It's a great experience. Uh, if you have a car, it definitely can add up for you because at either campus, you're given a bus pass. So that means that's part of those fees that are, are that you're paying for is you get that bus pass. Um, so why do you need a car if you can get everywhere you need to, whether it's Trent Durham or Trent Peterborough with that bus pass? I can tell you that at Trent Peterborough, you have to pay parking. At Trent Durham, you don't. So again, it's uh, you want to take that into consideration. Do you want to buy a parking pass um, or are you paying daily? Are you going to Trent Durham? If so, now you have to take into consideration gas. Where are you traveling from? Scarborough to Trent Durham? Are, are you in Peterborough? You need the car because you're not on residence. But definitely weigh those factors. The point of being on residence is kind of that you're in that environment. You don't really need to go anywhere. And if you do, you got your bus pass that you already paid for. Awesome. And Emma, again, loaded question, obviously. Um, but seeing as uh, you're still a current student, um, do you have any tips or did you find any um, really kind of good behavioral things to learn when it comes to budgeting your money and making sure that, you know, you're able to, you know, see the end of the semester or the end of the month? Yeah, so um, about the car portion, um, I have a car now in my fourth year, but for my first three years, I didn't. So I didn't have one in my first year. And I think like Danielle was saying, it depends what campus you're on. It depends. What I was thinking too is, are you traveling home every weekend? Because some of my friends go home a lot. Like, is that something you're looking for? Because other than that, I would I would say it really depends where you are financially. Um, if you don't have to pay for it, I wouldn't. That's my suggestion. But again, it is a personal choice and it depends on if you can budget properly. But for budgeting, um, I do recommend writing it down. You need to see it in front of you, okay? Um, and the way I budget is I mark down, you know, my rent, my phone bill, car insurance, gas. I mark down absolutely everything that has to be paid groceries, like everything that I need and that needs to be paid. And then I see, okay, well, from that, how much money do I have left over? And where am I putting that money? How much of that am I trying to save? And then how much of that? Okay, I'm going to, you know, eat out once every two weeks or once a month, and I'm allotting myself $30 for this. So really putting it down in front of you and kind of seeing where your money is going, because it's easy to tap the card and not know where it's going. I preach into the choir. <laughs> um, uh, I have a quick question here. Where can I find info on the bus pass and routes? Uh, is it a shuttle bus? Absolutely. So if you go to trendcentral.ca, um, you'll actually be able to find a link to our bus routes um, and the schedules there. And they will also have a link to the Trent Durham Student Association, so the TBSA, and they will also have links to bus routes um, and shuttle buses for uh, the Durham Express there. 
Uh, I have another question here um, that I wanted to get to because we haven't necessarily heard this question yet tonight. How would financial aid work if you are in Swansea for the dual law degree? Oh, you can still apply for OSAP. So um, Trent would be your home institution for the time that you're here at Trent. When you go to Swansea, you're still applying for OSAP, but rather than Trent being your institution, Swansea would be it. You would work directly with the ministry and you're only eligible for federal funding because you're not living within the province of Ontario. You're not eligible for those grants. Um, so you really want to save ahead, plan ahead, apply for all that external stuff because you're, you won't have that grant option. You'll only be eligible for the federal funding. Absolutely. Uh, I think we have time for two more questions here. Uh, first one, if I receive an external scholarship, do I need to report that to OSAP? Yes. So under your income section, there'll be an award income, and that's where you're reporting any external scholarships or bursaries that you're receiving outside of Trent. Trent will report everything that Trent gives, but um, everything else is the student's responsibility to report to OSAP. Absolutely. Um, and the last question here is, do you know if all provinces have the same interest free period policies as OSAP? I think they do. I'm not 100% sure. Amy might know exactly, um, but I'm pretty sure that they have the same kind of interest free policies. And you, I know um, that if you're in school full time, you still need to tell that province that you're in school full time. And it's the same way with OSAP, whether it's doing a new OSAP application, or if you're doing the interest free, um, the form to let them know that you're still in studies full time. But I think yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same. Awesome, awesome. There's a reason why I wanted to ask that question because I can now plug all of our wonderful resources. If you have specific questions like out of province interest fees, if you have questions about scholarship bursaries or financial aid, financial aid at trentu.ca, scholarships at trentu.ca, they're all available on the link there, along with our phone number, discover trent at trentu.ca and discover trent Durham will bring you to our general email. So if you have questions about financial aid, residence, programs, throw it all to our Discover Trent, Discover Trent Durham. We will do whatever it takes uh, to get you that answer or connect you to the right individuals. I also want to point out that if you, at the end of this, you know, feel like you want a little bit more Trent content, maybe you're just, you know, sitting up in bed at three in the morning and thinking to yourself, how can I know more about this wonderful university? trentu.ca slash virtual. We have a variety of virtual offerings. We are constantly updating that page as well because we understand that connection is a little bit difficult right now. But that doesn't mean that we don't see you and that doesn't mean that we understand that you also have questions you won't answer. For a prime example, Career and Co-op will be having a live stream next week. We also offer virtual tours um, that anybody can sign up for. So you can get a taste of that trend feel um, and also get more of your questions answered as well. So with that being said, this concludes the end of our live stream. On behalf of myself, I want to thank our panelists, Danielle, Emma, for gracing us with your knowledge, your advice, your words of wisdom, years of experience, um, and helping students uh, quite literally, potentially from all over the world, uh, feel a little bit more comfortable, not only about their education, but their finance and making sure that they're taken care of. I want to thank everybody working behind the scenes, um, answering questions that we did not have time to answer, making sure that this ran smoothly and that it is available for everybody here, which is the third group. I want to thank you, the audience, for staying up late, keeping us company during these cool end of winter, early springish nights, and making sure that future you is taken care of. So on behalf of Trent University, I want to thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening and remember that you are exactly where you need to be. Have a wonderful evening, everybody.